aqidah, I could say, in our books, which is the raj'ah, which, as you mentioned, is, is something mentioned by all our scholars as being mutawatir, a hadith that's been mentioned um, by many, um, many um, say, speakers or narrators, uh, this hadith of raj'ah. Um, before we go into um, discussing this raj'ah, can we maybe try and speak about uh, any proof uh, that we have maybe from Quran or from the narrations mm-hmm. from a hadith about this raj'ah itself. Ayatollah Khoui, rahmatullah alayhi, mentioned, was asked about the belief in raj'ah and he says, it's not a fundamental belief. It's not like tawheed or adala or nabuwa. However, there is no reason why one should not believe in it. Because there, is so, there are so many proofs available that if someone does not believe in it, that is his own foolishness. In other words, it's not something that if I don't believe in it, I'll become a kafir or a non-Muslim. Mm. However, what it is stupidity for me to not believe in it. With regards to any proof within Aqa'id, we have Aqli proofs, the rational proofs, and the Naqli proofs. Most of the proofs we'll go through are Naqli, those that are from the traditions, from the Qur'an, uh, from narrations. One of the main ayats of the Qur'an, so when someone asks you, what is the main proof of Raj'a from the Qur'an? We give them the ayah, وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فَوْجًا مِمَّنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِنَا That the day on which we will gather from groups of people فَوْجًا مِمَّنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِنَا From those individuals who denied our signs and rejected our signs, we will gather from those people a group. Now, some people say, is this ayah not to do with Qiyamah, the gathering of people? The answer is, of course it isn't, because on the day of Qiyamah, every single person will be brought back. Not just a group. Not just, this is saying a group of people. So what is this? The answer, this is a raja. And so we, found, uh, we find that the Quran initially mentions that there will be a group of individuals who will be brought back separately to the day of judgment. And with regards to the proof that they provide, they provide proofs primarily through Quran and what's known as the history of the Anbiya, the history of other people mentioned in the Quran. The Quran, for example, mentions again and again, Siru fil arf, travel in the lands. And Fanduru, look, ponder upon those individuals who came before you. Ponder on, for example, Ashab al Kahf, ponder upon, for example, the Roman society, ponder on these different societies because they are lessons for you. The Quran again and again mentions to ponder on history, to look into history, delve into the the different nations that existed so that we can extract lessons from their lives. However, unfortunately, as the Quran mentions, people said these are asatir al-awwaleen. These are old ancient myths and stories. There's no use for us. However, the Quran says no. The Quran itself mentions these various stories to invigorate us and to understand that they, for example, made a mistake. You don't make the same mistake. For example, uh, the people of Thamud, the people of Ad, the people of Ras, the people of Nabilut, uh, except Ashab al Kahf, Dhul uh, Qarnain and Yajuj and Ma'juj. This, these whole stories are mentioned in the Quran. Why? Because we can take lessons from them. From some of these stories, we can take lessons with regards to Raj'ah. We can understand how Raj'ah can take place. Because some people think resurrection will only occur on the day of Qiyamah. No, the Quran shows again and again, resurrection can take place before Qiyamah. For example, Surah Al-Baqarah, as we know, verse 73 and other verses mention about how there was the dispute about a certain murder. And Allah says, look at this certain cow with these certain characteristics. When you find this certain cow, kill it, slaughter the cow then take a part of the flesh of the cow and place it on this dead person's body. When you place it on the dead person's body, that person will then come back to life. I will give him life again so that we can decide about what happened in this murder dispute. So primarily here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, I have the power of course because I uh, I have power over all things and I am capable of allowing an individual to be resurrected before Qiyamah, number one. Number two, for example, the famous incident. Some say it was Nabi Uzair, some say it was another prophet. How Nabi Uzair was passing by the town and he saw that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's adab was on that town and he says, Ya Allah, how will you resurrect? And as we know, uh, he was caused to die for 100 years and then he was brought back to life. So Allah mentions, look, I caused him to die, I brought him back to life before Qiyamah. So Raj'a is of course this, that certain individuals will be brought back prior to Qiyamah. 
therefore showing that if the Quran says it's possible, of course it's possible. So various different stories like this within the Quran of people who were resurrected or were given life by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, again, for example, Dhul Qarnayn, his story is very interesting. Dhul Qarnayn, why is he called Dhul Qarnayn? Dhul Qarnayn, in Arabic there's something known as Muthanna, Tathniya, the dual form of the verb or the noun. Dhul Qarnayn is this dual form. Why is it the dual form? Some say because he had he lived through two centuries. Yes. Others say no. It was because his crown had two horns. Third, third person will say no because he was struck on his head on the right side and was also struck on the left side. Others say no because he was killed once. Allah subhanahu wa taala then allowed him to be resurrected again, and then he was killed a second time. So stories and books of ahadith and narrations are filled with this type of um, idea that yes, resurrection can take place uh, before Qiyamah. That's even the Ashab al-Kahf, I mean, the Surah al-Kahf uh, mm. is all about them, you know, how they uh, got resurrected after they, were, they thought they were, had mm. died. Um, with Raja when it comes to the time after the Imam, uh, just that period after the death of the Imam till uh, the Day of Judgment, you mentioned we mentioned in the first part that the Imams would come back um, and the oppressors who oppressed the Ahl al-Bayt would also come back and from that justice will be served. Uh, the question here uh, that arises is if uh, they are to come back uh, and get uh, justice being served to them in this world, what is the point of the Day of Judgment? Isn't that uh, a time where the Quran mentions uh, every person will see their sins, whether good or bad uh, deeds they have. Uh, every person will uh, be served justice. And if they are going to be served justice in this world, does that mean in the second world, uh, in the day of judgment, they will be forgiven because they've already served uh, their justice? And for example, we can talk about the, the killers of Imam al-Hussein <laughs> alayhi salam. There is a very interesting discussion with regards to Adil of Allah, the justice of Allah. Some people say, look, I, for example, in this life, I killed someone. Then I passed away, Qiyamah came, etc. The judgment was done. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hum fiha khalidun. You will stay in the hell forever. Of course, not everyone, but certain people will stay in the hell forever. I would say, look, Ya Allah, I was, for example, 80 years when I passed away. If for 80 years I was continuously sinning, does it not make sense that you only put me in hell for 80 years? That's the type of logic some people use, that 80 yeah. years I was sinning in this life, that means 80 years I should have punishment. The answer is very good. The answer is this, look, I, for example, in the UK, in London, I shot someone or I stabbed someone or I killed someone. How long did that actual action take? A minute, 30 seconds for me to kill someone? <coughs> however, the, however, the repercussions for that was that I was put into jail for 20 years. So how, the original sin was how long? One minute. One minute. The, origin, the eventual punishment was how long? 20, 20 years. years. So look at the difference. So if, for example, I say, Ya Allah, I've only been sinning for 80 years of my life, Allah will say, but that one sin, the punishment for one sin is not, uh, for one minute of sin, is not one minute of uh, punishment in the next world. Number one. Number two, why is it then that those people will be brought back? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes the reason he does something can be unknown to us, number one. Or he can do it to, for example, make that person suffer in this life and the next. So yes, that person, for example, the killers of Imam Hussain, uh, they were, for example, some were killed by, or the, those that oppressed Imam Hussain, alayhi, some were killed by Hazrat Mukhtar. Does that mean because he killed them that it is over now? The balance has been weighed? Because the Quran says, Kutiba alaykumul qisas. Qisas, <coughs> we understand, is an eye for an eye retribution. That within our law, and kutiba in usul al kutiba refers to something being wajib. There are three verses that come one after the other. Kutiba alaykum al qisas, kutiba alaykum al siyam, and kutiba alaykum idha hadar ahadakum al mawt, in taraka khayran al wasiyatu lil walidain wal akrabin. So these three verses of the Quran of Surah Al-Baqarah, the first is to do, or one of them is to do with uh, making a will before you pass away, which is wajib because kutiba is used. The second is with regards to fasting, which is, as we know is wajib in the holy month. And the third is qisas. Qisas says if, one, if someone uh, takes out one of your eyes, you take out one of theirs. If, for example, someone kills one of your family members innocently, you do the same. 
Now people think this is wrong. We say, no, the Quran says, لَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاسِ حَيَاتٌ For you in Qisas is Hayat, for is life. How? Because if, for example, if you look in the world today, in Bahrain, in Iraq, in Pakistan, all over the world where innocent people are being killed, the reason why this is still going on is because Qisas is not being implemented. Because if they come and kill five of your people and you do nothing, you sit back, they will become more brave. However, the Quran says, if you go and then kill five of theirs, or if you go and do something which acts as a force from your side, they will then stop killing. Therefore, there is life in the future. لَكُمْ فِي الْقَصَاسِ حَيَاتٌ But then the, the question comes, if uh, those individuals that killed Imam Hussain Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or oppressed him were then killed, does that mean it's over? The, the scales have been balanced? The answer is of course not, because one sin, as I mentioned, one killing of a certain individual, the reciprocal may not be killing that killer. It could be that that one person who was killed, if he was not killed, there were many different effects that that person would have. So you are in actual fact stopping those effects. So you're not just killing him, you're killing, for example, his knowledge. You're killing, for example, the speeches he gave. You're killing, for example, the people that he converted. You're killing a whole nation, Exactly. Maybe. Therefore, we understand that justice isn't this simple. Allah, yes, He knows what is just and He works by justice. However, to us, justice may not always make sense. So those individuals who are brought back during Raja, number one, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to suffer, make them suffer again in this life, but suffer under the rule of the Amma alayhi Because they, when they were living, for example, they may have abused the Amma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why Allah is doing this is unknown to us. He could just punish them on the uh, on the Yawm al Qiyamah in Akhirah. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe is trying to increase their suffering in this world. Trying to show that uh, you thought you could do what you want on my earth. I will show you that you will be on my earth and you will be restricted to what you can do. Because we as individuals, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. About Nabi Adam subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am sending on this earth my khalif. The angel said, no look, last time you sent, because of course Nabi Adam was not the first, there were others before. Mm. Last time you sent any of your creation on this earth, there was bloodshed. Allah says, no, I'm sending, this time I have Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa salam. When uh, he sent these different individuals, Nabi Adam, etc. And of course, we are here today. As we know, some were positively obedient to Allah, some were disobedient. Who has the right to eat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's food and be disobedient to Him? Who has the right to, for example, wear the clothes given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be disobedient to Him? So maybe Raja is to show those individuals you thought you could take. Uh, the make as they say do what you want no i will show you that on my when you are on my earth you work by my commands so this is the justice but we understand that's not the final justice justice carries on on day of qiyamah and afterwards that's one of the eyes i think sometimes that summarizes this justice being on this earth before the day of after as in that allah wants to see those oppressed in this earth uh, get uh, justice um, after being oppressed. Um, let's talk about this rule that you mentioned, because <clears throat> as uh, on this show we always speak about the rule of the Imam during that period. But uh, in the first part we said that after the Imam's death, the Raja, in the Raja phase, there's the Imams will come and rule. Um, how is this, or do we have any narrations about? Uh, is it like the same government as like for example the government of Imam al-Mahdi where we say uh, it's in uh, Kufa mm. um, where he will have uh, his um, government and where his city will be will this be the same for the rest of the Imams or will the, the rule change? Okay, let's first look at a few ahadith and then we'll go specifically to your question so there are many as I mentioned many ahadith I'll mention one uh, narrated from Imam Ja'far al-Sadat where he was asked about this whole issue he said إذا قام أوتي المؤمن في قبره فيقال له يا هذا إنه قد ذهر صاحبك فإن تشاء أن تدحق فإن تشاء أن تلحق به فالحق وإن تشاء أن تقيم في كرامة كرامة ربك فأقم. basically saying that look 
those individuals who were good in this life and they have passed away, Allah will ask them, do you wish to come back? And if they want to, they can come back into this life. And if they don't want to, Allah says, you can stay and be engrossed in my karamat, in my blessing. Here we understand that those two groups will come back. And as you mentioned, each of our imma will come back. As we know, Imam Mahdi, when he comes back, he will have his base in Najaf. Whether Imam Ali Alayhi will also have his base in Najaf is not known. But it seems most likely that if there is one base where they will rule the whole world, it is most likely. You find a beautiful hadith from the Imam where he says in one of his khutbahs, he, uh, one of his khutbahs, he says, look, all of the prophets, they made a covenant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they would help me, Ali ibn Abi Talib. They made a covenant. They would help Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Imam says, till today they haven't helped me. Till today, I have not been helped by any of the Anbiya. They will then help me when my rule covers East and West completely. So this tells us when the Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Amir al Mu'mineen, is in rulership over the whole of the world, the Anbiya will also be there to help him in this rule. So that what is the system? Each Imam will come. They will be helped by Anbiya. And the way that Imam Mahdi will be helped by who? Nabi Isa Sallallahu Alaihi here you find this is the kind of structure that has been uh, been built, and there is a very quick, very quickly there is a verse of the Quran: "Wala in qatiltum fi sabilillah." And if you are killed in the way of Allah, it's a very long verse. But basically, the tafsir of this says: that, Look, every single person who is killed in the way of Allah, fi sabilillah. The, the tafsir says, being killed in the way of Allah means being killed in the way of Allah, the Prophet, and the Ahlul Bayt. Any of those people who are killed in these categories. When Raja'ah comes, they will be caused to have a natural death. And those individuals who passed away naturally and they come back in Raja'ah, they will be killed. So each person who is brought back in Raja'ah, he will have one death where he was killed, another where he was he, he died normally. Because the Imma and Ahlul Bayt, they were killed in their previous lives, when it comes to Raja'ah, they will die natural deaths. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Shabar. It's been an interesting um, episode with yourself. I hope the viewers have benefited. Uh, of course, uh, the Raja is something that is um, um, always being discussed by our scholars and something that we can, I think, read into if we, if, uh, we get time to read into the Raja. Uh, the Quran does, uh, there are many tafasir from the Holy Quran uh, about different verses, some of which we did mention today, about the Raja <clears throat> and why it's actually mentioned in the Quran uh, before our hadith. Inshallah, uh, we can. Um, I hope we can do more readings on this, and maybe have a topic on uh, this topic uh, on this raja. Um, inshallah, we will see you in the next episode. I'd like to thank uh, Brother Shabar, and inshallah, we'll see you next time on the awaited. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا Oh, oh, oh.